contribution of women. I hope that you're hearing me uh, sufficiently. Um, I really have been very much involved for many years with the efforts of the Kalinago uh, territory and wider people, expanding the knowledge, the awareness among the mass of Dominican people that really and truly um, the contribution of the Kalinago people to Dominica is widespread. Uh, it's not just a matter of being a Kalinago or um, originating from the territory. First of all, as an anthropologist, including archaeology, we know that there are over 70 archaeological sites scattered around the island, which indicates that the influence and the presence and the settlement was very, very wide indeed. Um, and in our language, our Creole language, and even in the use of words for wildlife and vegetation, all the days, every time we're using Kalinago language, many Dominicans don't even realize they're using it. And don't talk about the place names of uh, Waitukubuli. That is the original name of Dominica, meaning tall. Wai is tall, Tukubu is body. Lee is her, the um, nature, the earth was always a woman. Um, and that was changed because we were sighted by Christopher Columbus on a Sunday. He was not able to land, but he called the island or Dies Dominica, uh, translating in Latin, the day of our Lord. And at independence, there was an effort um, to try to persuade the government of the day by Rosie Douglas, who later became briefly prime minister, to uh, change the name on independence to Waitukubuli from Dominica. But you know, people were stuck in their ways and, and this was um, opposed. As far as the language is concerned, uh, the, as I mentioned, the place names of Dominica all through, all around the island, I think more the majority of them are Kalinago names. We use them every day, Kolihu, Kalibishi, um, Salibia, Bataka, and uh, Layu, uh, Kashaku. I can just list a few of them. And these names are used every day. It's similar in a way to uh, St. Vincent, where we will say Layu, St. Vincent says Layu. We say Bawi, and Vincentians uh, pronounce the L's and they say Baril. So, I mean, they, there is this link between um, uh, Yurume and Waitukubuli in this regard. And then the other thing, which is very deceptive and people keep saying it, just the other, just today I saw on Facebook because there was discussion about um, indigenous people, oh, how many, how many Kalinagos are left? The thing is that uh, there was a conference in, a, in, in 2011 in Puerto Rico in which they uh, presented a paper where they had done studies in the previous years of the DNA content of Puerto Ricans. And uh, it, it was 60%. And I am sure that both in St. Vincent and in Dominica, if we approached it from a DNA point of view, we would have a massive number of indigenous linked people uh, to, to that. So that is a, another important thing to, to consider. Um, and then of course, the knowledge of the women handed down, there was a division of labor by terms of gender. And this of course is because of the research that we have done uh, from mainly the 17th century and what has been passed down, the women were very much the planters. They were the ones because of their fertility, what was seen as being their fertile nature, 
during the rainy season, the women had these important um, parts to play in terms of medical knowledge, herbal knowledge, but also they were the ones that planted, whereas the men would prepare the land. So you had all of these interesting um, divisions of labor by gender. So that's one thing. And um, then the other thing is that more recently, my involvement really is from childhood because both my grandparents, my grandmother and my grandfather, in those colonial days, when there was no um, universal suffrage, when everybody could not vote, only a limited number, they represented the, the, the territory, including the land of the Northeast of Dominica. They knew all the chiefs, the chiefs who come and visit and so so. I kind of grew up in, in all of that. And then particularly, in the 1970s, when the real Kalinago uh, identity movement came at the time of independence in 1978, and the demand for a special piece of legislation to protect the indigenous people. The, the indigenous people made this demand of the British government and of the Dominica government that they would not support independence unless there was legislation which was called the Carib Reserve Act, passed in 1978. And now it is the Kalinago Act. And it makes quite clear, uh, you know, the, the management controls, all of the matters related to, to the territory. We are in a better position, for instance, than what's happening in Barbuda, where, uh, you know, there are these councils and so, but they don't have the same uh, teeth. And then also in the 1970s, uh, we had our first parliamentary representative uh, sitting in the House of Assembly from the Salibia constituency territory. That was at the same year when I became a member of the House of Assembly. And Mr. Lawrence Daru, he was the first Kalinago representative in history. And I'm sure even within the wider Caribbean, because nowhere else did you have in the wider Caribbean, a representative. And then at other times, she moved into women representatives. We have um, Annette Sanford here with us. But back in the 80s, we had um, Anne Timothy. Anne Timothy was elected uh, as a parliamentary representative. So we've had women uh, within the territory uh, already. And so the 1970s really is seen as this crucible of identity of the cultural groups, of the women who have been taking part in um, representing the culture, the folklore, the traditions of, of the territory. So in a, in a way, it is an extremely positive experience over the past 40, 50 years because of the dynamism that has been created and continues to be created by the young people within the territory. Because as they become more and more aware over the last decades, and with the involvement of people like um, Senator Sanford and others, Carinia uh, Group, um, women who have uh, involved themselves in, in agriculture, in the maintenance of, uh, for instance, the head person managing the Kalinago Barana Aute, which is the cultural community, cultural site within the territory. All of these are uh, indicators that that you know women really are there uh, in the forefront and have been. So it's a very positive background to this. I um I won't go into too much more detail. I, I just want to give the overview that as a researcher and also as an archaeologist, realize that all the time up to this past week we have been finding in cooperation with universities that have those grants that are able to finance the work in communication with those persons uh, from the territory who uh, are interested some of the main excavators are from the territory uh, togo from sensi and just the other day former chief um, irvins august and others were on the site. So there's a lot of cooperation going on there. There's a lot happening. But the main point is, although we focus on the territory, 
I think that our next step is to make the wider population of Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean aware that the Kalinago impact is far more strong than just the traditional way of looking at people and saying, oh, well, they, they're Kalinago. Uh, so that's the areas that is exciting, dynamic, and very interesting to follow, particularly at this time when we have this uh, International Day and when we have a theme on the voices of the Indigenous people.